Up on the coast of northeast Scotland, the 1980s was a time of unprecedented change. Aberdeen was in a, a state of uh, transformation. At that time, the four major industries were fishing, uh, shipbuilding, industrial textiles and, and paper. And a lot of them were in decline. And of course, then the oil hit Aberdeen and uh, it basically changed everything. We saw a large influx of, of people from around the world, a lot of transient people into, into Aberdeen. Alec McKay lived here through these changes, but the memories that have stayed with him are of his uncle George and one of the city's darkest episodes. George was uh, born and bred at Aberdeen. He grew up in Aberdeen. Was a, he was just an ordinary working man. And we called him, well, part of the family called him George. Uh, our part called him Dodd, which is, which is an abbreviation for, for George. My uncle Dodd was, was just a genuinely nice guy. He liked kids and growing up, we had a, we had a great time with him. He loved his hobbies, uh, whether it was uh, keeping his pigeons. He had, a, he had a small boat that he, he liked to go. And I think he was a, he was a big kid at heart as well, uh, in many ways. He'd been happily married for 37 years. My Aunt Jessie was one of life's gems. Um, her and Dodd met and married. Um, they had a great, great marriage. The relationship was, was really strong, really, really strong. In the late 1970s, George was made redundant from his job at a factory. To make ends meet, he took up work as a taxi driver. And that was really just to earn an income from it for him and my Aunt Jessie. And he didn't particularly like it. I know my Aunt Jessie really hated him doing that job. She always said to him, she says, I'm worried about your dog doing that, particularly on the night shift. He says, oh, Jess, he said, if anybody tries to, to take my money, etc., he says, I'm going to give it to them. He says, I'm not, he wasn't, he, my uncle Dodd was not a fighter. He just was not a fighter. On Thursday, the 29th of September, 1983, George was working an evening shift. At around 8.30 p.m., his Ford Cortina taxi was seen parked as he picked up a fare on the busy Queen's Road. He radioed through to the taxi control room to say he was heading to Kuta on the western outskirts of Aberdeen. But George would never reach his destination. As George drove his taxi towards Kuta, he turned onto Pitfoddle's Station Road and stopped. It's there George was brutally attacked by his passenger. The attacker used a cheese wire as a garrote. They spilled out onto the road where two boys passing on their bikes witnessed George being strangled. He was desperately calling for help. The two boys raced to call the police, but it was too late. Dodd was late, and Jessie had been anxious in terms of when she got to see her, her, her husband again. And then I was, uh, there was a knock at the door. Police were there. Was on it. It's funny, I never get emotional, but just uh, something's set me off, sorry. And then the phone in Alex's house rang. What did you say, Mother? He says, Dodd's dead. I says, oh. And then, of course, I asked her what had happened, and she says, well, it's a little bit fuzzy just now, she says, but he's been murdered. Um, he was out in his taxi and uh, someone's murdered him. Um, and that was, that was the, the night that, that we lost my, my uncle. Police.
police have been searching waste ground and gardens all around the quiet suburban street where Mr. Murdoch died. Dog handlers, too, have been called in to help in the search for a man between 20 and 30 years old whose dark clothing say the police may be bloodstained. I would appeal to anyone who was in the Queen's Road area of the city between 8.15 and 8.45 last night and who saw anything that they think will help me. Police have set up a base close to the spot Mr. Murdoch was attacked on the ground outside his taxi. The man they're looking for is five foot seven inches tall, thin, has short dark hair and is clean shaven. The news shocked the nation. Dubbed the cheese wire killer, police mounted a huge manhunt to find George's murderer. It was brutal, very brutal. Someone carrying a cheese wire with them? Yeah. Wow, what kind of person would do that? They're not using it for their, for their work. It's premeditated. It has to be. It takes a special, callous individual to go out with, with something like that. A possible sighting of a man seen with blood on his hands at a local chip shop shortly after the murder didn't bring any new leads or a name. After a long investigation, and despite their efforts, there were no substantial leads and no further clues. All that is known is that George's wallet and his fares from that evening had been taken. Jesse's worst fears had been played out. Unfortunately, of course, after the the death of, of, of Dodd, um, her life changed just remarkably. She, uh, her health went into decline. She never ever spoke about uh, Dodd's murder, but she never felt safe. She always thought that the killer was gonna come back and harm her. On the 24th of March, 2004, Jessie passed away. So unfortunately, she went to her, went to her grave, not knowing who who his murderer was. At times, it makes me angry, um, sad. I mean, that she wasn't able to 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 see justice. After all this time, Alec and the rest of George's family haven't given up hope that someone may come forward with information. For the family. Um, and also for, for those that have passed, you can't take something like that to your grave. I mean, even if it's a hunch and it's a small piece of information, please share it. Small snippets of information from you might actually help us with small pieces of information from somebody else. We're able to start joining the dots. I mean, close your to a family is, is, I mean, it's like gold dust. It's something that you, 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 you crave for, that you need. Uh, we certainly do. Even after 38 years, and I know a lot of people might say cold case murder, who, who cares? And a family care. We've, we've always cared, we always will. <laughs>